um, as a young girl growing up, how was how was your Laos life for you? Uh, the early stages of my life was actually very pleasant. Um, I was born into a family. I had my mom, my dad, my siblings, then the first few years of my life was pretty normal. Uh, I could say my I was born into a well-to-do family. My dad was well-known and had several businesses and um, somewhat, I wouldn't dare to say we were rich, but we were okay. So the first few years of my childhood was very normal and good. Right, right. No, no yeah. real problems. A regular, a regular young life. Yeah. Uh, growing up and stuff <laughs> like that. When, when do you recall things started to change for you? At what age? At five, things took a turn for me. At age five. And what, yes. What happened? Uh, my parents went out of town one day and decided that I had to stay over at my grandmother's house. Yes. And um, my mom and dad made the decision to leave me there. And unfortunately, on their way back, my dad's vehicle broke down, so they couldn't make it back in time. So I had to spend the night at my grandmother's house. And what happened there changed my life forever. Um my first night staying over there and um, my grandmother's husband, when it began getting dark, I remember him coming into the room on me and asking me a series of questions and followed by him sticking his tongue down my throat and sticking his fingers where they didn't belong. And that's where it all began for me. So the, the male figure, that's, it's, your, it's your grandmother's husband. Correct. Okay, but he's not your He's not my biological, biological grandfather. grandfather. No. Okay, so... But is he's all the grandfather I've known, so, yeah. So, the first time he did it, you were five years old, right? I was five. And, what and it started with him kissing and um, using his fingers, the digital penetration, yes. And at that age, I, I mean, you're five years old, did you think that... At that time, you, I mean, you're thinking that something is wrong with that, right? I knew something was wrong immediately because the questions that he started asking me was, first of all, when I got into the room, it just, it just felt different. It, it did not feel right. And followed by the questions that he was asking, if I knew how to kiss, if I wanted him to teach me how to kiss, all of this. At five years old, I knew something wasn't right. And um, I answered him, of course, no, I don't know how to kiss. And no, I didn't want him to teach me, but that never stopped him. So, yeah, he started kissing. And as I said, it got worse. So. So did you ever tell your grandmother, hey, your husband is molesting me, he's making passes at me? I never told my grandmother because that happened that night. And um, I... He, after he did all of that and he threatened, to, he told me that no one would believe me if I told and if I said anything to anyone, he was going to harm my grandmother, he was going to harm my mother and all of this. But it never took because the morning after when my mom came to get me, I told my mom what happened. And what did your mom say? <laughs> That's the tough part. My mother checked me. Uh -huh. And when she brought me home, I got home and she checked me by pulling my undies down and checked me to see if he had penetrated, which he didn't. And she pulled my undies back up and told me that I shouldn't say anything to anyone, including my dad. Now, let me just get this out of the way right now before we go into anything else is that I found out later the reason why my mom did that was because of fear, because my mom was also right from by this man from she was six until she was 16 years old let's go back and a little it, bit how did the how did your <laughs> grandmother how did your grandmother meet him i honestly don't know there's certain stories that's been circulating throughout the family for years and it was just a matter of she was dating someone else and they met and um he wanted to talk to her and somewhere along the line, they started messing around with each other, as in not doing anything yet. But um, what ended up happening 
he wanted to talk to her. She wasn't being direct with him or whatever the case is. He ended up raping her. However, what, what? happened after that, he raped her, but she still married him. Hold on. So, so he raped your grandmother before they actually started to date? Yes, he did. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> And that didn't phase the situation. She still went on. They, she still married him. She still married him. And people may be asking, how do I know that? These are my grandmother's direct words, not just to me, but to several of us, including my mom, my aunt. So she's, that's her story she tells. He raped her, and she still married him. Okay, so, so here is this guy that she already know is a is rapist. A rapist. Mm -hmm. She brought him into the house, and here he is meeting your mother. Yes. What happened there? My mother is her eldest child, and she had uh, several other daughters after my mom before he came in the picture. And what I know now to be true is that he also, as I said, he raped my mother. He began raping my mom from she was six years old, and my aunts. He did this not just to my mom, but to my mom's sister as well. Sisters. <laughs> he raped your, your mother, your grandmother. Yeah. She married him, brought him into the house. He mm -hmm. raped your mother. In addition, he also raped your mother's sister, which is your aunt. My aunt, yeah. So, w was he on a tyrant... Was he on a, a, a raping spree? What, what was wrong with I, this guy? And um, in addition to my aunts, uh, he went through several cousins as well. Um, he was doing his rounds in the family before it even got to me. So, yeah, he was on, if you want to call it a raping spree, I don't know. But he was having the time of his life. So I, I'm sitting here now. Guys, you're watching right along. And I'm watching the comments here. And I'm going to get to your comments. Um, big up to Chopper John West is in there. Uh, Nilsa, everyone saying that this is crazy. This is this is this is beyond crazy. This is insane, right? <laughs> um, so I'm assuming now that he made the wrongs to the entire family. Um, your grandmother must have known now that this guy is no good. What action? What what happened there? What action did she take to remedy the situation? Well, for years, my and still today, she says that she doesn't know. She didn't know. She then that's her story that she keeps repeating. She had no idea what was going on. However, in recent years, I've concluded that my grandmother knew. If she did not know all along, she knew a few years well that something was off. And another thing that I, at this point, my mom and my aunts, we have gone through this and we've actually debated amongst ourselves if that's the truth, that she really could have gone so many years without having any inkling whatsoever. I don't believe that to be true because there is a God-given mechanism that I believe and I know every woman is born with, right? And my grandmother was not exempt from that. So I knew at some point in time, especially after uh, her nieces, if a couple of her nieces had had that experience with her husband as well, and they had reported, they had spoken, but they were met with threats, they weren't believed, and the way it was handled, nothing came out of it. They were chased away, and they were told that it was said that they were lying. But I'm saying after all of this happened, you know the how you got with him, what happened to you, and if you have nieces and not just one or two, you have several nieces reporting that this man has done this to them, at some point in time, you don't stop to think, okay, something is going on here and something is not right with him. One of the biggest issues I personally have with my grandmother is that at, when I was living at her house and he began raping me, which this is jumping ahead in the story, but he began raping me now from 11 through 16. I was literally living at the house. I, at first I started going there because I, my mom left me somewhere else and my grandmother had came and taken me from that place, brought me to my aunt's. But I started visiting the house um, again. Unfortunately, I had to because my aunt that I was staying with, you know, cousins, it's her mother. So we were still 
told or asked to go to the house. So, but after I got to the age of 11, he, he amped it up, you know, and he started raping me now. And even going through the going to and from the house, I am thinking at some point in time, my grandmother, something had to have clicked in her head. And even when I started living with her, at nights when she's sleeping with him, she never stopped to wonder where he was getting up to go. He couldn't possibly be going to the bathroom for that long. And nothing, nothing. She kept saying she didn't know, and she still says that. But I know different. This is this is very alarming. I, I saw someone post in the chat room earlier. They said they, they have to be dreaming. Now I, I I'm I feel the same way. I cannot imagine <laughs> a human being could be so ruthless in 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 the need on the urge for sex, right? That he would rape an entire family. But what's even more alarming? to me is that the gra your grandmother never protected you or never protected anyone by possibly getting rid of him what was her position to this whole thing did she ever break and say okay you got to get out now this is enough enough is enough i can't take it anymore did that ever happen that never happened because as i said she till this day she stays saying that she did not know anything about it and what is it that we expect her to do if she didn't know anything about it and at one point in time i was giving my grandmother the benefit of a doubt right and for some reason for my own benefit i think i was saying okay honestly probably she didn't know because no one wants to believe especially i'm a granddaughter especially her daughters to know that this is mom this is my mother and you know something is happening and you do nothing about it. Take, for example, one of my aunts. Um, <laughs> it's not my story to tell, but one of the experiences that she had is that he used, she, my grandmother used to send her to his job, to his workplace. He was working in some fields. Right. And he would send her to take lunch, to send my aunt to take lunch to him every day. And she would go ball, kicking and screaming, she does not want to go. She does not want to go. And she would still insist and sometimes beat her to go and take the lunch to him. And every time she did that, every day he would be raping her in the cane piece. And I'm saying things like this, my grandmother never took notice of anything. But when I started realizing that there wasn't, there isn't, my grandmother's not telling the truth totally. After I grew up and I, I migrated and I started traveling back and forth, a few years ago, um, I had gone back to Jamaica and this was years and years ago because my little brother was three then and he's 20 something now. So my one of my first trips back there, I had brought my, my baby brother with me and believe it or not, I was still going back to their house because again, that's how I was programmed uh, growing up. You know, we can't say anything. We have to protect my grandmother from her husband because he's going to kill her he's going to kill all of us and blah 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 so I was still going back to the house even after I left and I brought my baby brother with me and I remember he had turned three and I decided to throw him a little party this was his first time to Jamaica so we were having the party for him and they threw flour it's a it's something that we do in Jamaica you know they throw flour all over yeah, and um, he he panicked, and so I brought him in the house to wash him off, and I, I bathed him, clothed him, and was taking him back outside, and here comes my grandmother's husband, and my grandmother was sitting on the porch on the veranda, unbeknownst to me, and her husband came up to me and said to me, so what are you going to give me, that, and didn't you bring anything for me? And apparently I said to him, which I know I now remember after my grandmother told me this, that I turned to him and I said to him, the only thing I would give you is three shots, three bullets in your head if I had a gun. My grandmother heard this, and as I said, this was back in 1998. Right. My grandmother heard her first grandchild say that to her husband, and as a grandmother, she never pulled me aside and she never said to me, but no, Larissa, 
what kind of hatred could you possibly have for this man that you would want to put three bullets in his head? Nothing. She said nothing of the sort to me. And years later now, back in 2013 and all of this, when all of this started coming out and I brought him to court and all of this, that's when she started saying to me, oh, she kind of, she should have known and this, that, that, because she heard me when I said that to her. Right. And she never said anything to me. I don't want to go to the court proceeding yet because there is... There is a part of this thing here which I don't understand. Um, okay. Your mother, she was there, she is there to protect you. Okay, say that your grandmother failed and your grandmother is protecting her husband. What was your mother's mm -hmm. excuse for not protecting you? Fair. And that's honestly all I can put it down to. Right. And Fear that. and her wanting to protect her mother. I know it sounds crazy, but um, that's pretty much what it boiled down to. She wanted to protect her mother because she was honestly afraid and really believing that he was going to kill her mother. And even though I am her daughter and I know we've heard it, I've gone through it. Trust me, I've gone through years of going back and forth with my mom about the same thing. But... After understanding now, because my mom, at my coming to her at five and saying whatever, this man did whatever to me at five years old, I think my mom literally just went back to that six-year-old child and just fear took over. And it, she did not act the way she was supposed to act, unfortunately. She did not come to my defense then. But... And it took her a few years to get to where she is now, but thank God she finally did. But um, to answer your question, that's all I can think of, and I know to be so. It's fair. Now, Jen Jen in the chat is asking, now, where was your father? My father was there, but my father knew nothing about it. My dad, God rest his soul, he passed away April 2nd of last year, and he went to his grave not knowing any of this. So he was never aware of what he was going through. He never, no, he was never told. Now, why was this guy so fearful? Was he a big dude? Was he, was he a police officer? Did he carry guns? Did he, did he have machetes? Was he killing people? Why, why was that, he fearful? That right there. Um, no, he wasn't a big dude. Um, he wasn't to look at. Um, he wasn't even a scary dude, so to speak. But he was known in our household and in the community as just this very ignorant bastard like he had a temper and he would flare up and one of the things that he was really known for is that he always had a machete and he would walk around and he would sharpen that machete in your face you know it's always like the scare tactic that he used to quiet all of us right uh, for me personally um i can't I know it's the same tactic he used for my mom and my aunts to manipulate them, you know, fair. But for me personally, as I said, um, my mom and dad had migrated at this point when he's, he began raping me. And one of the things that he used to, to, to manipulate me was that, was that if I opened my mouth and I said anything, he was going to cut my brothers and my sisters' necks in their sleep. So as a little child... I am not going to run the risk. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. So I wasn't going to use my, my siblings as a bargaining chip, but try to figure out if he's playing or not. So you do the best thing as a child. You're afraid you keep your mouth shut. And worse, I was told to keep my mouth shut. So I did.